Welcome to hashtag 52 needs and this week we are exploring honesty and specifically in the context of work and I am so delighted to have with me Abel Wanamakok who is a professional communicator and the founder of Find Your Voice Asia. Abel's goal is to guide individuals of any age to communicate honestly, openly and from their hearts. With her own experience and her client success stories, she leads through the formative process of going beyond one's ego to find the true authentic self to use one's natural strengths and talents to nurture the relationship with oneself and others. Successfully balancing a fulfilling family life with a glamorous world of celebrity, Abel has been, is, is an award-winning coach and has been named Asia Women Leader 2019. With over 15 years of experience as a news anchor, TV show host, stage MC and voiceover artist, Abel has worked all over the world, taking on many stages, including TEDx and motivational speaker, speaker engagements. Welcome, Abel. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you to everybody watching. Very, very happy to be here. Great. So let's talk about honesty at work, which is a really interesting topic, especially when you're a leader, because when is too much, when is honesty too much honesty? Do you want to, what do you want to share with your people, right? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I can let you know that uh, I do not work in a corporate environment, uh, and I haven't been working in a corporate environment since I was 21. Uh, so mm -hmm. I pretty much work and live in my own world. My world uh, that I live in, I, I'm, I am a leader. I definitely consider that, uh, but I do not lead like big, huge teams of people. It doesn't have to be. Uh, that's yeah, that's so the I, point. You're a leader right. with your children but you're also a leader with your clients. Right. So like again, as a coach, let's right. go into that. How much of yourself do you share when it's oversharing, when it actually throws people into, well, I'm losing respect for this person? Because that can happen. Mm. You know, there's a, we've talked about this before. There's a lot of judgment going on all the time. And mm. sometimes when we overshare, when we just give away too much of who we are, that can mm. sometimes undermine our authority. Yes, that is definitely true. And I think this is something that you only learn through experience mm -hmm. and from meeting a lot of different people. I find my strategy is always to listen first, to be uh, aware and understand the situation first before I insert myself in the situation. Uh, I'm not the type that likes to be like the know-it-all. Uh, I used to be the type who likes to be a leader or to plow through but this was with my early 20s when I have less life experience mm -hmm. and I find that that's not a very smart move in any situation I find that when you tend to observe and understand then there's always a chance for me to uh, insert myself into a situation I, I find that um, quality speaking uh, of course honestly uh, with honesty and with your experience is always the best instead of sharing too much or trying to showcase too much of your sh yourself uh, or boasting about your abilities. Uh, that is not honesty. That is just, you're just doing things to enhance your own self image of yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're not being honest with people that you're working with because you're there for yourself. Yeah. You're not there for the other people. Yeah. And I don't like that personally, whether I was, I'm, I mean, I've just been a coach for three or four years, but I was never like that uh, in the first place. And I do not like characteristics of people who like to talk about themselves or to boost themselves because they're there mainly for themselves. Mm. And when you're there for yourself, you're not being honest with yourself because you cannot be somebody who knows everything. Mm. You can never know everything, uh, even though you are very talented, very smart in your field. There's always room for you to observe, be quiet, learn and listen. Mm. And then you insert yourself, you know, but that's my strategy. Okay. That that's my way that has worked wonders for me. And that's why when I speak, people listen. Mm. Uh, and I find that works excellent for me. I, I always listen more. Um, and then speak honestly from my experience about what I know to, to, to try to help enhance the success of whatever situation that we're in or event. 
mm-hmm. or, yeah. or clients. Yeah. yeah. So I think we are so used to people who are supposedly honest. I mean, if I say the word politician, you know, there's generally <laughs> the word politician and honest is not something that people often use in the same sentence. I'm, I'm totally generalizing here. I know that there, there, there are politicians out there who really who are honest. But there are lots of um, election promises. And then after when once they've won the election, that's off the table. That's there's no longer that's not even mentioned anymore. But at the moment, the honesty that they that they proclaimed to have was their truth. Mm-hmm. And then and that often can happen in a leadership role, you know, like I'm being really honest here. This is what we're doing. And then when the time comes, it, it, things are totally different. I mean, this is how people get made redundant, you know, like you know, I'm really, no, no, we're keeping you definitely. And, you know, I'm really honest with you here. It's a difficult time, but, and then from one day to the next, they've lost their job. So we, we have, I think we have learned at work to, to mistrust honesty. And I'm, again, I'm totally generalizing because this is supposed to be food for thought. It's just about finding out how much honesty at work is really okay. Mm -hmm. And in, in any Um, kind of context. right. Right. I don't, I don't have too much opinions about, you know, politicians, because I, I particularly, I mean, I, I choose not to focus too much of my energy in, in that aspect. Maybe I just don't have a lot of interest in uh, politicians. But um, I mean, there, there, there was one ex president in the US that I definitely do not think is a very honest person. That's the one and I don't even off. Yeah, and I don't even want to uh, say his name. Uh, and this is all I'm going to say. This is all, all the time that I'm willing to give him. Yeah. Uh, but um, if you talk about, you know, I think some people or I think almost everyone tries to be honest, but their level of honesty may be different mm, yeah. in their minds. You know, they might think they are very honest, but then they are perceived not that honest because everybody, everybody has their own compass of what honesty means and yeah. what it means to be trustworthy or truthful. Yeah. But the other thing that you had mentioned that I wanted to add is that when you're talking about a situation where you are being very honest about what you know at this time, this is the truth right now, mm-hmm. but nobody can see the future. Right? No, no one can see the future. E, as, as much as we think that we are so intelligent, you know, humans are the most egotistical animal. We are animals in the world. Yeah. Uh, that's why we're screwing up the planet so much in so many ways when the dumber animals, you know, like whales and elephants, they don't hurt the planet like we do. Mm. But we are so smart. We are so intelligent. We think we can control the future. And we really, we we have an influence over it, but we don't have like a 100%, you know, uh, you know, like a, what do you call it? Um, Statistic, you know, for sure that this is going to happen. So even though you could be telling your team in this moment in time, this is your truth. This is what I think is going to happen. And this is what I want to want to share as a communications coach is that I hear a lot of people say things that is their truth Hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that you are wrong for saying that this is your truth right now, but give yourself some room to breathe. Sure. Instead of, so say, I believe this will happen. Absolutely. And that's, but that's integrity. (laughs) Right. And there's a difference between saying my, speaking my truth and being honest with integrity and saying, this is my truth right now. And I don't know what's going to happen versus saying, this is my honest, this is, I'm being really honest right now and knowing fully, fully well that this is not going to be something that will happen. Right. So that I, and I'd rather not. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You know, and again, right. that could be the, the intentions could be either. It, I'm not talking about evil intentions. I'm not. I'm way right. beyond politicians here or anything like that. I'm just saying I can go and I'm, I can say I'm be really being honest here, but on, but honestly, I don't want to be honest. And that can often happen when people get, you know, when we give people feedback. You know, when somebody asks us for feedback and we go, yeah, that was actually really good. When we go, no, it wasn't. 
but we don't want to hurt people's feelings, right? Or whatever the reason is, so we, they, they're important, we don't want to piss them off or, yeah, you know, whatever reasons there are. And oh, we, yes. think we are really honest at that point. You know, yes, and, and in, exactly. at work specifically, it can get very challenging because yeah. how much, again, how much can I talk to, say to somebody, oh, let me give you some feedback here. That really didn't work. And the person yeah. may not take that very well. Yeah, you know, I think you are absolutely right in that aspect. And that's why I find myself very quiet when I'm at work. When I was working for somebody, um, one of the things that my dad taught me is to allow your actions to speak louder than your words. Uh, and that's what I, I followed. And I find that it works very well for me, even though I'm a very articulate person. I mean, I can talk you to death if I wanted to, but I like you know, people life. wouldn't want that. <laughs> people wouldn't want that. You know, like, like for me to win a conversation, let's say with my husband is no point mm. because it could hurt our relationship. And I said, it could, it's no point um, for, for, to boost my, my, my truth, mm. to boost my mm. ego and to say that I'm correct. Uh, so yeah, there, there is definitely times when it's just best to maybe not share your truth and allow people to live out their truth. Yeah. Maybe that is what, what is more important is yes, you have one opinion, you have your opinion, mm. but it's not necessarily another person's truth. No. And you have, you know, like there's billions of people in the world. Yeah. If you ask everybody, what do you see in this apple? I'm sure many of them would see totally different things. And that is their truth. Yeah. Uh, and we have to accept and be wise enough and, and to, to allow others to learn their own truth in their own time, their own process. Uh, and I think that that is sometimes even the best way is to be patient with yourself and with other people uh, about about truth because yeah. truth is is just a perception i think yeah again well, there's okay. truth and there's honesty okay i mean yes. I, I i was just remembering a client who really practiced honesty and she had somebody in her office at one point who really wanted to be promoted and she basically said to this person you will never be promoted you just don't have what it takes and, you know, and she get, she, her feedback was absolutely, you know, like, was it to the point and was it, was it true? Yes. But the honesty that she had meant that mm. she lost that person. That person resigned. Right. Oh, wow. You know, because it wasn't what she had said. It was how she had said it. Like yeah. The person, the person left the office crying because it yeah. was like, you know, it was just a slap yeah. in the face. Yeah. I so, think it's the, like, it's the, like you said, it's, it's how, mm -hmm. it's how it's done. Also, um, words are interpreted. Words are listened to what? 30% words technically is 30%. And then what? 70% is the body language. Seven, but it's well, theoretically, I mean, they're obviously different cultural models as well. <laughs> seven, yeah. According, according to build rapport, to build trust, it's 7% yeah. is words and the rest is body language and tonality. Yeah. And, and I find that the, the, the combination, of course, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying anything that uh, you don't know or that people don't know, but um, I find that I'm able to teach communications coaching because people think that they know how to speak or they think that they know how to articulate mm -hmm. or share. But sometimes when you come across to, like, just like the example that you gave, uh, she can be honest and be truthful, but with the compassion, with empathy, right? It could be, it could come out a totally different way, but um, sometimes we forget that. We, we forget, and I'm saying myself too, you know, we, we forget it because we're so wound up in our own, our own heads, you know, uh, yeah. of, of what we believe is the truth or to be, to be honest and, and right, yeah. that we just push it all out yeah and then of course there's this i've just pushed out my truth and then somebody comes back with their own truth and we just go yeah. i don't want to hear that and again especially right. if there's a hierarchy involved 
you know, yes. the person in the higher, higher up in the hierarchy has the right to be honest, but the person who is lower in the hierarchy, like, you know, somebody, a team member versus a leader doesn't have the right. And I find that, you know, I find that really ch challenging because mm -hmm. honesty is good, you know, again, with all the, the layers around it. But yeah. I, when I work with somebody and when I work with leaders, I always encourage them to get to say to people, give me your truth. Give me your, be honest with me. Tell me when mm -hmm. something doesn't work. Tell me when something works mm -hmm. because you just, it's otherwise people start protecting themselves and, and mm -hmm. they, they just, and the, the consequence of that is, is they just don't give everything they've got. They will start just holding back because yes. there's that judgment and they, yes. if they're really honest, they will be punished um, or, you know, there will be consequences of some sort. So they just hold back and they, they keep their best ideas to themselves. Yes. yes. I think it's the, if you are a leader in a work environment, it's very important to give a safe environment yeah. and always, and then don't forget to praise people too. I, I find that uh, leaders, um, somehow feel that maybe to praise too much is not good. Mm. Uh, I'm not telling you to praise them three or four times a day, but I'm asking you. In an eight huh? hour day, that would probably be easy saying, thank you. That worked really well. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But that's thank you. Of course. Thank yeah. you for finishing this. Thank you for helping me with that. That's praise. Right. Right. Well, okay. I guess my, my, my idea of praise is um, much, much more than thank yous. Okay. Uh, but um, you know, not, not to boost somebody's ego too much. Yeah. That's what I meant by, you know, too much praise, but yeah. uh, to be polite to, for example, if I am helping somebody with their fear of public speaking, and I'm only saying this because this just popped into my head and I'm not saying this to promote myself, um, is that most people are afraid of, like you said, the judgments, the perceptions, the, oh, they lack this. Oh, I didn't know they lacked. I didn't know he lacked this or the, she lacked this. And now she's showing what she and he lacks. Mm. People don't want to show that. Mm. And um, it, it's very important to give people that safe environment, that feeling of safety yeah. so that they at their own time and their own pace, they're willing to share their truth. Absolutely. Because it does take, it does take time. Some people may never come to the truth. Some people die with their truth. Hmm. And I know people who die with their truths. I know people who are unwilling to say sorry. Yeah. They die to their graves with that, you know, that, that I'm not going to say sorry to you hmm. because it's not my fault. You know, it's not my truth, you know? then you are the one who holds on to the anger and, you know, you're the one that suffers, yeah. you know, the, the one who holds on to, to, to that. Um, but I have, you know, I know so many people that are like that mm. and uh, it's quite sad, but yeah. that's a totally different uh, environment now compared to uh, at work. So sorry to deviate from, from the no, honest work. The thing is we spend, I mean, like maybe not you and I, but many people spend more time at work than they spend with their families. And even, mm -hmm. even at times when we work remotely, like you and I do, yes, we still spend a lot of time at work with other people. So yes. it's important. And if you've got a team around you, it's yes. really important to have that kind of honesty so that you can, because if, you, if there's no honesty, how are you going to work to it, with each other and saying, this is going in the wrong direction. Let, can we course correct? This is not working. Yeah. Or, you know, again, this, this doesn't seem to be working for me. Could mm -hmm. we talk about that? And I'd, right. I'd, I've always said that, I mean, that it's really important. I want feedback. Mm -hmm. I can't learn and I can't grow if I don't have feedback. And I'm, yeah. I, I, I want to be in a space where people can approach me and say, um, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. That's hard to accept also, but it's good feedback. Yeah. yeah. And again, as a leader, I mean, I'm just taking it back because, you know, into, into the leadership space, there are so many layers as well. And I would invite everybody to look at 
what level of honesty they're comfortable with. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you have to share your deepest, darkest secrets and take home pe people home for a barbecue on the weekend, you know, like and share their, your whole life with them. But when you're honest about things, be really honest about them. Don't ramp mm -hmm. it up and become a brand or, you know, promote yourself in such a way that people don't really see you for who you are anymore. But mm -hmm. show up as a human being. And yeah. as you said before, you know, the intention is to be honest right now. You don't know the future, but show up real. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times uh, when we talk about honesty or speaking our truth is really comes from how we project our feelings, mm. because it's not it's not because we you can hear people say things, but you cannot understand the full picture when you when you listen between the lines, right? Because sometimes people do not know how to say certain words. They are not comfortable with being honest, but their body is telling you that they want to share. Uh, I have clients who want to be honest with me about the trauma of her past, but she can't remember it, for example. Mm. Like she cannot remember her, her trauma. So she cannot even help herself. She cannot help. She cannot help herself. She cannot be, she doesn't know, you know, so some people have that level where they, they don't even know how, or they don't understand themselves enough to, to be honest. And that is where it goes beyond the, the words. So if you are a leader and if you're a coach, you actually have to have more of that life experience or the yeah life experience pretty much where you can see beyond people's words mm -hmm. and you can hear their hearts you know like the cries of their hearts that's that's I think that is what um allow coaches to be coaches mm -hmm. because you can see the human being the yeah. total in their totality even though they may not be able to articulate what it is that they're trying to say and then you would be able to ask the right questions or to say certain things to them yeah. that allows them the confidence, the safety to speak a little bit more and a little bit more. And then they are learning about themselves in the process. I think that is sometimes uh, very, very important as a leader as well to, to allow, you know, to, to, to help, let's say, to assist a guide. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Most, I mean, my experience is that uh, successful leaders often have a coaching approach. Mm -hmm. they, they, they talk to people from that coaching perspective to, to guide them to a higher level of competence and autonomy and all of those things that are really important when somebody wants to achieve things that work and feel good about what they do and contribute in the best way possible. Right, right. So right. coaching yeah. and leadership, you know, same, same, really. And it <laughs> always starts with self-leadership. So. Yes. Well, yes. I know we can talk about this much longer, and I know we will. <laughs> oh, gosh. Time flew by so quickly. Oh, I know. Thank you oh, so man. much. And thank, you, <laughs> thank, thank you. you for your honesty, and thank you for being able. Um, and um, <laughs> yeah. thank you, everybody for else, for, for joining us. And um, until next week, thank you. Thank you.